Today, we're looking at Noodler's Rome is Burning. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Noodler's Rome is Burning is a brown ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Pierre Cardin President with a medium nib to take my notes for this video. Now, before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done, and this is very interesting as an ink that comes across so brown, because the chromatography doesn't really look like a brown ink's chromatography. We see this very blue leaning purple across the bottom and it's really staying in place. It's what's really there. That's the reason that when you remove that brown that's on top, you get the purple underneath. And yellow pushes its way up. A very bright yellow, but not their highlighter type yellow. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And that blue does not budge. It is absolutely fixed into the filter paper in only 10 minutes. And the yellow pushes up quite easily and you even see areas where it's the water has pushed the ink entirely out of the way. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. Now I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, based on the chromatography, it performed just as well as you would have expected. Absolutely nothing is moved, it's not blown out. This is a good ink to use in a note-taking situation. Now water is removing the brown and leaving the purple behind, which is a feature of this ink, and it's really quite interesting. We didn't expect water to remove it. Pen flush didn't do anything that water didn't do. It's only moving the brown out of the way, leaving the purple underneath that's there. You can see that it's moving that yellow out of the way because you see that's all across the top of this smear. Now, one third bleach solution did not make the blue budge, not at all. It's very there. It means make sure you try this out in an inexpensive pen before you go and put it in your thousand dollar whatever. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Rome is Burning has a viscosity of 1.57, making it a very wet ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Rome is Burning has an average dry time of 8 seconds, making it very fast. It's because it's aggressive, but it's still very fast. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form, and uh, since it really didn't do what I was hoping, I'm kind of glad. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. And before I do the writing samples, I want to point out that it has this great color changing property to this, right? And you get to see that in a color swab when I'm talking about that stuff. But this is what made me very interested in this ink. And in the end, made me very disappointed in it. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shading. Now I gotta talk about this weird yellow line that's going on. What I did is I grabbed a Q-tip, this Q-tip, and I wanted to see, can I, can I control that purple, the brown going away and the purple coming out? And I couldn't, I just got ugly smear, which I was gonna deal with if I could get the color change the way I want. It did not happen here on the Clairefontaine. I just got the ugly yellow smear, or what we see is running away on the, uh, chromatography. 
The Extra Fine is a darker tone than the 1.1. The Extra Fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shading. Six seconds to dry. The Medium is the same tone as the Extra Fine. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, seven seconds to dry. The Scrubby of the Medium shows some color variation, but we didn't get any. The Scrubby of the Extra Fine shows a little bit, and again, we didn't get any. But the Smear Test, it's such a permanent ink, You'd be able to read if you smeared it. Tomoy River. I get no bleeding. Some ghosting. The 1.1 gives no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade. Again, here I did the swap, the, the Q-tip to see can I control and bring out some of that, that purple. No. I couldn't. I'm sure if I put this into just a water bath, it would all turn purple, but that's not what I was looking to do. I wanted to see can I control it and make some very interesting things with writing or using the ink for art, and it just doesn't do it. The Extra Fine is the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feathers, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 10 seconds to dry. The Medium is the same tone as the Extra Fine. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, 12 seconds to dry. The Scrubby for both showed us no color variation, and we got no color variation. And the Smear Test, you probably could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. Rhodia. So we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Sort of. I put this in a Pierre Cardin President. Medium nib, it's a much wetter pen and I get a lot of ghosting and a lot of bleed spots. And a spot that it touched the page underneath. Just to be warned that, you know, it can be an aggressive ink. And this was much newer when I put it on and I still could not control the color changing. But here we have no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. Seven seconds to dry. That weird yellow smudge again. That's me using the Q-tip. Can I control and get some color change? No, I could not. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, eight seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show some color variation, but I didn't get any color variation. And you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. White lines paper. Lots of bleed spots coming through. It does not, uh, you could not use the page, the back of the page. It does not touch the page underneath. The 1.1 has some spread. It has tiny little feathers all over it. It has no halo sheen, no shade. The Extra Fine has spread. It has tiny little feathers all over it. It has no halo, no sheen, and no shade. Three seconds to dry. The Medium, I'm sorry, those are the same tone. The Medium is the same tone as the Extra Fine. The Medium has spread. Only has a couple spots with some feathering. Not feathering all over it, just certain spots with feathering. So the feather is not too bad on the medium. It has no halo, sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show a little bit of color variation, but we didn't get any up here. And the smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. So you see I gave up on trying to do the smear to see if I could control some color because it wasn't happening. No bleeding, no ghosting on the Apica paper. The 1.1 is no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade. The Extra Fine is the exact same tone as the 1.1, with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, five seconds to dry. The Medium is the same tone as the Extra Fine and the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, six seconds to dry. The Scrubby for both show us a little color variation, and we didn't get it. Not up here, not in the writing. The Smear Test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Strathmore writing paper. We get no bleeding. I mean, we get a little coming through when it's on the scrubby. I'm putting it on stupid thick, so I don't count that against it. We get no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade. The extra fine. Same tone as the 1.1, with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, three seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine. It has no feather, spread, Halo, sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry again. The scrubby for both. Show us a little bit of color variation. Again, we're not getting it up here. So the scrubbies on all of these lied about the writing. That's why I find the writing to be the best way to actually see what the ink looks like. The smear test, you could definitely recover this if you smeared while you were writing. And that 
is all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Rome is burning, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I chose a nice dark black, Noodler's Borealis Black. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Noodler's Rome is burning? You have to watch out if you use this with a broad, wet pen. It's an aggressive ink and it can cause itself to even bleed into or really uh, attack into the paper you give and it bleeds in or through quite a bit. Even on Rhodia, I want it with some problems. Now the most standout thing about this ink is its color changing property. Now I put a swab down and I started trying to just remove the brown from my notes for the video and just make an area purple. And I found I couldn't really control it turning purple. And since that's the major feature of this ink and it's difficult to get in there and actually control making this color change happen, I'm glad I had it as a sample. I, I'm glad I tried it, but it's just a gimmick. And, you know, not my favorite of gimmicks that are out there. Thanks for watching.